What are Satan's plans? If, if we wanted to just kind of understand what his plans are, how Peter himself, who wrote those words, succumbed to Satan's plans. In fact, the, the words in 1 Peter 5 that you have before you where it says uh, that, that we are supposed to be on guard or vigilant, that's the exact same word Jesus said three times to Peter in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, Peter, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. Peter, watch, be vigilant. Gregoreo is the word, and, and pray so you don't fall into him. Peter, watch, be vigilant. But Peter went to sleep. He underestimated his own strength and the devil's strength. And so just as Jesus warned Peter three times to be vigilant, Peter failed three times and denied Christ three times. See, when we're not aware of Satan's tactics, his strategies, his methods, and when we are not conscious when he has come into the situation, for example, James put it this way, he said when we're operating with God, the wisdom is from above, the wisdom that God pours out on us is pure and peaceable and gentle and easily entreated and full of mercy without hypocrisy. That's what God brings. But he continues to say, what is from beneath, what is earthly and sensual and demonic is envy and strife and selfish ambition and confusion. Whenever things in the church get striving, confusing, ambition is present, that's when the wisdom is not being heeded from above. It's, it's where Satan has snared believers. So, what is Satan's strategy? What is his playbook? How do we get devoured by him? Well, if we're aware this morning that Satan wants to poison our thoughts and emotions, then we'll see that any time we get away from the purity of God's truth, Satan's at work. And what does he work on? He works on our minds. The battleground is the mind. Our mind is the conduit, the communications, the receptor to the spiritual world. It's our mind that processes words and turns them into spiritual truth that we interact into experiential knowledge of God. It's our mind that the devil wants to neutralize. And if he can neutralize our minds, dull them, fill them with doubt and with fears and with error, what we believe dictates how we behave. So if we believe right, we behave right. If we believe wrong, we behave incorrectly, ungodly, and wrong. Satan is the father of lies. He wants to snatch the word of God from us so we think that sin is not so bad as God says it is. Remember Jesus said that, that when the word of God is, is proclaimed, it's like seed being thrown out, but the devil comes right behind and snatches that word away. That happens all the time. It happens by people being distracted by everything and they, they, they are looking and, and thinking about everything except the truth of God. And they wonder why it is, why that thought crossed their mind that just got them derailed. It is not anything less than Satan's desire to distract us from the conscious response to the Word of God. As a devil, he wants us to learn to laugh at sin on television or in the movies, to dull our consciences so it will no longer warn us of God's displeasure with sin. As Satan, he wants to entertain us with sin so that we become very tolerant of it. He wants to fill our minds with doubts and lies and false doctrines. You see, when Satan begins to entertain us with sin, we doubt what God has said. I mean, that's just where we are in our culture right now in the world. We are being entertained by sin. And, and it is immorality that is the underlying theme of everything. And immorality is against God's standard. And so the more that we are comfortably entertained by immorality, the less we really believe that this God we've never seen that's so far away we don't even know where he is, that he could be right about those, those very hard and, and very strong standards that his word places before us. As Satan, he wants to entertain us with sin so that we become very tolerant of it. He wants to cloud our minds with those doubts about God's goodness, lies about his faithfulness, false doctrines, 
that debilitates our wills, that confuses our emotions, that corrupts our desires, and then draws the affection we're supposed to have for Christ away from him. And that's, that's his desire, and that's his active pursuit today.